Hello students, in this video we'll begin our discussion of cardinality. We say that two sets A and B have the same cardinal number or cardinality if there is a bijection phi that maps A to B. And of course, phi of bijection means two things. It means that phi has to be one-to-one -one or injective and onto or surjective, right? So this exactly bijections phi mean that two things. The first condition is that if phi of A is equal to phi of A prime, this implies that A is equal to A prime. This is equivalent to the function phi being injective. So it's an injective function. And the second condition that we need is that for every, for all B and B, there is an A and A such that phi of A is equal to B. And this is the notion of the function phi being surjective. So you map to everything in B, and you only map to everything in B in exactly one way, okay? And so there's some special terminology we have with cardinal numbers or cardinality, right? If we let, if I let I, N just be the set one, two, up to N, then the cardinality of this set I, N, I'm gonna write like this, I'm gonna write cardinality of I, N, is exactly equal to n, and we call this, these sets that have finite cardinality, or that are bijective to i n, finite sets. So i n is a finite set. If the set is not finite, if there's not bijective to one of these i n's, then we call the set infinite. If the set isn't finite, it's infinite. So there's a dichotomy there. We also want to draw a dichotomy between something called countable and something called uncountable. So let's talk about that next. So we let n be the set of natural numbers. One, two, three, forever, the natural numbers. If a set C has the same cardinal number as m, is bijective to n, we call c countable. Or countably infinite. Okay. And if c is not, if the set c is not finite, or it's not countable, we call the set uncountable. So, if not, finite or countable, then uncountable. Okay, so those are uncountable sets. So of course there's some classic examples of sets that are bijective to n. So for example, there's a very simple set. If I look at the set 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, etc., that's the set 2n. This set is bijective to n. In fact, what we can do is we can look at a map phi that takes a natural number n and maps it to twice n. Is a bijection, that's easy to check, it's a bijection between n and 2n, okay? Because if 2n is equal to 2m, cancel the 2s, m is equal to n. That's easy, so it's injective. And likewise, for any if I have an, uh, like a 12, I can get to 12 by plugging in a 6. I can get to 24 by plugging in a 12. So we can see that's clearly a surjection as well. If I want to get to 2n, I'll just plug in the corresponding n. So everything in the set 2n comes from something that looks like 2 times n. The n that it comes from is the candidate that you plug into the function to get to that function surjective. So twice n is bijective to n. So in other words, 
2n is countable. Likewise, 3n is countable, 4n is countable, 5n is countable, the set of primes is countable. Any subset of a countable of this countable set is also itself countable. We'll prove that in a future video. A more interesting one, of course, is the set of integers, right? So example, z is countable. Okay. And so what we can do is this. I can find the mapping psi, which maps n into z a bijection. And how am I going to do that? I'll just let psi of n be one of two things. Psi of n will just be n over 2 if n is even. And so in this way, I can say if I plug in 2, I get to 1. If I plug in 4, I get to 2. If I plug in 6, I get to 3. So we can see we get all the what? All the natural numbers when n is even. And if I look at negative n minus 1 over 2, if n is odd, so if n, for example, is 1, I map to 0. If n is 3, I'm going to map to negative 1. If n is 5, I'm going to map to negative 2, and so on. We see that this psi is a bijection, so that proves that z is countable. So in future videos, we'll, do, we'll try to understand properties of countable sets and give examples of sets which are not countable. Thank you very much.